Hello and welcome to this video. I've been asked so many times how to pick an amazing property investment, especially right now when property prices are rocket high and when people are really struggling to actually secure properties and plus there's so much um, uh, competition out there. You can go book a viewing to, to, to actually view a property. By the time your appointment comes, the property is gone. There's so much competition out there. People really be asking me, how do you pick the best property investment? Because obviously, one, you've got the competition. Two, you don't really know what you need to look for and etc. Cetera, et cetera, especially when everybody's cramming on that property and everybody wants to get it. How do you really pinpoint to understand whether these people that are struggling or these people that are getting these properties are really experienced investors or looking for a diamond property or they're just amateur investors who just wants to get into the property market because obviously they, they, have, they have realized that the prices are going up significantly. So in this video, I'm going to share with you how to pick the best property investment and you will learn how to pick the best investment property. So when you're looking to invest in property, it's vitally important for you to know what your aims and objectives are. Why do you want to invest in property? Are you investing because you saw your friend invest or do you, are you investing because you want a passive income, capital appreciation? Whatever it is, you need to know what your aims and objectives are and you need to set those so your investment strategy would be on that basis. Okay, and also because you want to invest, it doesn't mean that you have to buy properties everywhere in the UK. You need to come come into some sort of a sort of um, a decision which area you want to invest because when you're looking to invest in properties you, you need to it's important for you to pay laser focus in your investment area we have so many different areas once you've determined your goals how much money or how much money you could get to actually invest in properties and then they determine the areas where you may be able to use your investment to buy properties in those areas okay so once you know those areas maybe three or four or five or even six areas then you need to you need to actually work out which of those areas do you really want to concentrate on to ensure that you've get the best return of your investment so it's important for you to find a patch an investment patch a town city it could be an area wherever it is just find that patch or city and then obviously specialize in that town or city what do i mean by that you go all out to find out what the property market is in that area how much properties are going for what the rent rate exactly so you need to know that area so that it helps you a lot more with your investment plans as well as it would allow you to be able to build rapport with the estate agency that are, that are selling properties in that area as well so find your investment area and again build relationship in that area so that when the deals comes you can get you you can be contacted instead of you hustling looking for these deals the other thing also you need to be looking for basically, especially now when the property market is absolutely crazy right now, properties that are, that are, that are valued for 80,000 are going for 110, 120,000. So in, in, in this time of the economic climate, we're looking for trashed properties. So what do I mean by trash property? We're looking for dilapidated properties, properties that we could add value to right you're not going to buy a, a property that just needs tlc or change your kitchen or bathroom expect that to give a better return on investment so if you want to get a better return on investment you're looking for properties that you can add significant value to suppose you saw a property it's a two-bedroom house a mid-terrace house somewhere near city center or town center and you went and viewed this property you realize the property got two reception room and the bathroom is massive and there's a little tiny room somewhere on that floor there's a potential then for you to convert that property into three bedrooms maybe you want to move the bathroom um, because the bathroom is a bigger room you can then move the bathroom to a smaller room or you can move it to the room downstairs again then you have three letable rooms upstairs that is adding value but if I was to advise you find a way to get a bathroom within the floor within where those two bedrooms are so you can add value and then they've got a bathroom as well or what you could do if if the if the bedrooms are big enough you can have an ensuite in one of the bedroom and then you could then still move the bathroom downstairs and then still get to you a little room or you could basically do conversions or find a way to add value now we know with covid everybody now know who you could work from home find a smaller room if there is a smaller room or smaller portion somewhere in that property 
create that as an office call it as a call it as an office if you have to do a, a loft conversion you do a loft conversion but you need to add that value if you don't add value you would really struggle even to get your return on investment or even to make a better cash flow because if the property is nice very very done up you're buying it as a turnkey property meaning the price would be a bit higher than buying a property that needs work i.e trashed property so what i tell the agents that i went to view properties with i'm telling them if if it's if if it's think of way think of me because obviously i like to look for properties that can add significant value to the other thing you need to consider also when you're picking your property you want to ensure you pick a nice investment properties the size of the property so what do i mean by size of properties you need to be looking a minimum of three bedroom house now why do i choose three bedroom house three bedroom house is what most of the houses in the UK are in the first place and secondly if you have a three bedroom house your tenant would end up staying in your property for a very long time the reason being they have enough rooms to accommodate their family suppose they move into a two bedroom house they have one child once they've got a second child say they have a boy and then they have a they, they have another girl what that means the house becomes smaller for them because eventually they would need those two rooms one for the boy and one for the girl and then your house will not be convenient for them and they will be thinking about moving out to find a three bedroom or four bedroom house again if you're investing looking for a long term long term cash flow or long-term generating wealth you see it's important for you to look for properties that are about three bedroom um, uh, properties that have three bedrooms because with those properties you'll be able to have tenant long-term tenant staying very very long time and again look for properties that are in a very good sort of um, uh, school or college area so I tend to look for for um, secondary schools look for properties that are very close to secondary schools because obviously then there's a nice that that would be a nice catchment for the parents so when they're moving if the school is good amazing schools in the area they end up staying in your property for a long time as well that also helps you have a long-term tenant who would pay you rent consistently and the other thing when you're picking your property you need to find out what sort of tenant type are in that area okay because it's vitally important knowing this for two reasons number one you will renovate your property according to your market okay number two you'll be able to know how much rent you can afford people can afford to pay in that area you don't want to renov buy a property um, uh, significantly above market value or, or really really go on renovating it very expensively only to find out the people in that area or the tenant type in that area cannot afford to pay that sort of rent maybe they are on benefit or they are not working they just cannot afford it so knowing your tenant type is very important because that that then helps you renovate your property accordingly and again it helps you understand what would be the potential rent for that property because you don't want to spend that much money only to rent your property below market rent because people cannot afford to pay for what you anticipated to have that then drives me nicely to the cash flow before you buy any property vital important you need to know whether it's making you money or not right i've been approached again recently people buying properties are making them loss hoping that rent would go up and eventually they will start making money so again even property needs to make you money if it doesn't make you money there's no point investing in it so you need to know your cash flow what your cash flow what your rental income is by knowing your tenant type What's your estimated rental income? If you take out the mortgage, right? How much you got left over to pay your expenses as well as your insurance and whatever it is you need to pay to look after that property. Very important for you to know you're making profit. In all my properties, I ensure my buy to let properties I'm talking about here. I ensure making a minimum, a minimum of 300 pounds per property per month. Okay, I need to make that money before I even consider viewing a property right i only view it because if, when i know uh, there is a potential to make 300 pounds in it if there's no potential to make 300 pounds in it i move on look for another property so your cash flow is very important because the thing you want you're investing in property for it to be passive income for it to work for you without you getting involved you don't want to have sleepless nights so you don't you don't want to have sleepiness plus also you don't want to invest in the hope that it would go it would go up no you need to ensure it's, it's going to make you money from the day you buy the property or from after you renovated the property because if not that you would be having sleepless night or you have to 
literally find money somewhere to subsidize your your um uh, your um, um investment properties and nobody wants to be in that suit sort of situation i know you don't want to be in that sort of, sort of situation and your investors or whoever you're working with at the bank wouldn't want to be in that sort of situation so ensure that your cash flow is positive, minimum of 300 pounds, buy to let. If you're not making that, walk away from it. You know, one good deal is better than 10 bad deals. So very important for you to ensure that you're making positive cash flow. I'm emphasizing this because it's very important. This is what oils the machine, basically. If you cannot get cash flow, you'll be able to pay your mortgage and you would even struggle to get a mortgage in, in the first place. So ensure you're making a minimum of 300 pounds per buy to let property, family let property, before you consider even viewing that property. The other thing you consider also is capital ap appreciation. Important for you to understand the area. Again, vitally important for you to know your patch. Then that would allow you to understand what the capital appreciation is in that area. Okay, so check how by how much property prices have been going up in your investment area. Is it by 5%? Is it by 3%, 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%? However it is, go and check it. Check that first. For us, the, the, the our investment area needs to be making us a minimum of 5.5 percent capital appreciation a year if there's no capital growth if it's less than five percent or 7.5 percent we're out in that area we won't invest because we want to go with the uk average um, price increase because property prices goes up in the past 80 years by 7.5 percent but it has to hit that figure 5.5 to 7.5 percent if it's not hitting that figure obviously again we're going to walk away from that deal because we know we're investing to, to uh, make money add value and be able to pull some of that money out to go and invest in a, in, in another property so so very 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 important for you to know that where you're investing there's a capital appreciation there and you know in two three years you can remortgage pull some of your investment out and you move on to another investment the final thing you need to look look for also is your return on investment the return on investment is key the the reason why it is important to know your return on investment is that you want to know if your money is working harder for you right you just don't want to invest 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 you don't even know what your return on investment is so you need to know what that is a return on investment formula is basically it's your net rental profit for example if your rent is 300 pounds and then you times that by 12 you divide that by the initial investment say you put down 25 pounds just say you put down 25,000 pounds to buy 100,000 pounds property you will divide your annual net profit by that amount that gives you your return on investment your return on investment is how much you've made by investing certain amount in your property investment um, uh, um, property basically so you need to literally know how much that return is if it's five percent you know it's, it's 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 kind of a bit low so for me for my buy to let it needs to be making me a minimum a bare minimum of five percent again so if it's less than five percent again it's not juicy for me i walk away find a property that will generate me slightly or more than five percent because i need to have a minimum of five percent anything under five percent i don't touch purely because it's not worth my risk so again these are the little things you could look for so i'm going to go through them again so you know exactly what they are basically you need to find a patch have an investment area know where the investment area is right and uh, find properties that you could add value to i call them trash properties okay properties that you can go nobody wants it's think of we basically it's got problems with it nobody wants it because it requires lot, lots of work you see the different picture of how, what you could add to that property and then obviously negotiate and buy that property and the size is key look for minimum of three bedroom houses if it's not three bedroom houses if it's a two bedroom you can convert if there's a potential to convert in, into three or four bedroom you go for it and again because you're adding significant value and the tenant type know what sort of tenants are in the investment area okay very important so that you could renovate your property accordingly cash flow it needs to be making you a minimum of 300 pounds a month if your property investment is not making you a minimum of 300 pounds you walk away from it because obviously you're not going to invest for um, less than 300 pounds otherwise it wouldn't really worth your investment 
And the other thing you can you consider is capital appreciation. Your property, you need to be buying properties where property prices goes up. And again, that way you'll be able to put some of your investment out in the future and then reinvest back in buying more properties. The return on investment is very important because this shows you how hard your money is, is working. Okay, again, this tells you what your return on investment are, and then that then gives you an idea of how much money you would need for a future deal to make your money work a lot more hard. If you like this video or any of my videos, don't forget to hit the like button below subscribe to my youtube channel for more of these amazing tutorials thank you so much for listening i look forward to sharing the next video